Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to finish the rule of three for this book code base I've been working on in the last couple videos. So let me just take a quick refresher of what the rule of three is and what the state of the code is. So the rule of three in C++ says that if you define any of the following, then you should define all three. And what are the three? Destructor, copy constructor, and member-wise copy assignment. So why did we have to even define one of these to begin with? If you take a look at this simple book class here, it's got three private attributes, title, author, and numpages. Numpages used to be just an integer, but then a video or two ago, I said, okay, well, let's work on dynamically allocating attributes for a class. So let's make numpages a pointer to an int. So that changed everything. After that, we had to define a destructor that properly freed numpages because numpages was now dynamically allocated in the default value constructor. You can see on line number eight in the explicit value constructor, you can see on line number 16 and in the copy constructor, which we had to define because of the destructor that dynamically allocated numpages. So right here. Okay. So because we had to implement a destructor, then we found out it was best practice to also implement this copy constructor. So in main.cpp, there was this line of code right here, which was giving us this error, double free detected. Okay. That was because before the copy constructor, what was happening was a member wise copy assignment, which would take each attribute value in HP two and copy it into each attribute value in HP three. Okay. So recall, books have these int pointers, right? And what is an int pointer? It's a variable that stores the memory address of an integer. So the memory address of numpages was being copied from HP two into the numpages for HP three, which means both HP three and HP two had the same memory address, which means they pointed to the same integer in the heap. Therefore a change in one would also be reflected in the other. So this was bad, uh, not just for, you know, just working with HP three and HP two and the num pages are linked, but because when the destructors are executed for HP two and HP three, HP three is going to free that memory. And then HP two is going to try to free that memory again, which is going to crash our program because of a double free. So, we implemented the copy constructor in order to fix this line so that we weren't getting that double free error. Okay. So that's number two in the rule of three. Now, number three in the rule of three is what happens if you just want to assign a book to another book. The emphasis here is that we're not constructing a book. See how HP three doesn't exist in this case, copy constructor, but it does already exist in this case. So it's a copy assignment. All right, so I'll just show you again over here. If I compile this and run it, I do get this double free detected. If I comment this out and just decide I'm never going to do member wise copy assignment, then our code will work just fine. But we're not properly adhering to the rule of three uh, by just hoping that no programmer ever tries to copy one existing book into another existing book. So there it is crashing. All right, so that's what we're gonna do in this video. We are going to uh, overload the copy assignment operator so that we will properly copy over the value in HP2's uh, indirect num pages into HP3's um, num pages indirectly. All right, so let's do it. We'll start in book.h because we need to take a little bit of notes and provide a prototype. So this is just a nice place at the bottom uh, of my class definition here for book. Uh, probably should come back and reorganize this since we've been adding quite a bit here. Uh, but this is going to be a public member function of the book class. And what it's going to be is an implementation of a function that is going to perform copy assignment whenever the assignment operator is used and both operands are books. All right, so the return type is going to be a const book reference. I'll explain this here in a moment. The name of the function is operator. As you can see, this is a reserved word. 
in C++ and then the actual operator we're overloading. There's going to be one argument which is also going to be a const book reference. All right, so we're going to implement this inside of book.cpp, but here's the prototype, which I'll just copy over. So I'm going to call this parameter right, and I'll explain that right now. So let's go back to the example where HP3 is being assigned HP2. All right, so HP2 is on the right side of the assignment operator and HP3 is on the left side. So that means that HP2 is the parameter and HP3 is the invoking object. All right, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense if you think about it in terms of HP2 is the right side, it's the parameter, HP3 is the left side, it's the current object. All right, so while we're thinking about the current object, now is a good time to talk about the this reference. So this is a reserved word in C++ that is a pointer to the invoking object. So in our little example here, it would be a pointer to HP3. If I type this, you'll see that it shows up in that same kind of reserved word font that operator and const and void, etc., show up in, in this little text editor that I'm using. All right, so why do we need to care about this when overloading the copy assignment operator? So I'm going to write, it's good practice to check that we aren't doing self-assignment. Okay, so that would be like say uh, HP3 is assigned HP3. So why do we want to check and make sure that we're not doing self-assignment? Well, in this little book example, uh, this isn't really going to be an issue, but you could imagine, say, another class where it has a dynamically allocated array as one of its um, attributes, and we need to free that memory in order to allocate new memory to copy those values into. Well, if we free that memory before we do a copy, then we're going to lose the values that we need to copy from. So it's just always good practice in order uh, to overload these operators. Just start with a check to make sure that this, okay, there's that this keyword, it's a pointer to the current object, is not equal to a pointer to the right object. So I'm just going to use that address of operator right there in order to check. All right, so now that we know we're not doing self-assignment, I'm inside this if statement right here, I'm going to go ahead and do the copy assignment. So the evoking object's title is going to be assigned the right object's title, and same thing for author. These two are pretty easy because they're not dynamically allocated, but the issue comes with our third and final attribute. So numPages is a pointer. We do not want to copy the contents of the pointer. We want to copy the contents of what the pointer points to, meaning its indirect value. So I'm going to say the contents of what numPages points to is going to be assigned the contents of what write.numPages points to. So just emphasis here, copy the indirect values, not the pointers. Okay, we don't want to copy the addresses here. I can even write that. No addresses are copied. That's what got us into trouble before. That's what's causing this right here. So we're going to make sure that we're going to copy integers. Hopefully one of these two explanations uh, really makes sense. All right, we're almost done. The only thing we have left to do is return a book, return a book. So what book are we going to return? Well, think about this. What if 
this assignment operator execution is part of perhaps a chain of assignments. Maybe something like HP3 is assigned, HP2 is assigned, HP1, and so on and so forth. Okay. Well, assignment executes from right to left. So HP1 will be the right-hand side of uh, execution of this, this member function right here with HP2 being the invoking object. Once this is done executing, what is going to be the right-hand side for this execution of this function when HP3 is the invoking object? Well, it should be HP2. So that's why we need to return the current object. So remember, this is a pointer to the current object. So if I dereference it, then I will get the current object. Okay, so just to explain one more time, once this assignment finishes executing, there needs to be a right hand, op uh, right hand oper sorry, a right hand operand for this assignment, which means that we're going to have to return the current left hand side so it can be the right hand side for the next execution of this function. Uh, kind of fun, kind of crazy to think about, uh, but if you draw it out like this, it makes a little bit of sense. As we chain, we're going to have to return the left-hand side so it can be the next right-hand side. All right, so let's save this and let's run it. Okay, so, oh, it looks like classic thing to forget. Uh, don't forget your book and your scope resolution operator in order to make this function be a member function of the book class. All right, so it looks like we've fixed our problem. Yay, we don't have that double free crashing our program anymore. All right, a few more things I wanna say about what's going on here and then we'll call it a wrap on the rule of three. And uh, that is a little bit more about this. So this is really, really awesome, really cool. Where does this come from? Where is it set, et cetera? Uh, so I will say this. This is passed as a hidden argument to all non-static member functions, okay? That means if you're in a static member function, there's no this reference because you don't need an object in order to invoke that non-static, um, excuse me, in order to invoke that static member function. But in a non-static member function, uh, which is all of these functions here, for example, you have to have an object in order to invoke that member function. That object, okay, is the invoking object, and this is implicitly passed to that member function, and it stores the memory address of that invoking object. If you haven't worked with static before, uh, no worries, you can uh, look it up. Uh, static is a keyword that means a member function uh, belongs to the class, not to say an object, so you don't need an object in order to invoke it. All right, the next thing I wanna say is, what happens if, say, we don't have our return type be a book reference? Let's just say the return type is a book. So let me update this here. And recall that we have one, two, three, four, five books, right? HP1 through HP5. So we see five destructor calls. If we change this, let's see that we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six. We actually have six, okay? And I put in this little hello from copy constructor in order to give you a little hint about what's going on. So if this function here returns a book, then what's actually being happen is the copy constructor is being invoked to make a copy of the invoking object. Okay, that's why we want to make this uh, more efficient and return a reference so that another book doesn't have to be created and have all, <laughs> have all of the attributes from the invoking object of this uh, member function be copied into it. Okay, so that's why there's actually six objects in this case because we're making an extra one when we're returning a book because the member wise assignment will occur. So let's put that back to uh, return reference. 
and we'll see, we won't have another invocation of the copy constructor and we will only have five book destructor calls because there'll be only five book objects ever created in the life of this program. One, two, three, four, five. All right, well, hopefully that was an informative introduction to operator overloading and conclusion to the rule of three. So now we can successfully use the assignment operator uh, both for creating an object with our copy constructor and for reassigning an object uh, using the memorized copy assignment operator. All right, uh, thank you for watching.